A silver padlock is not a gun. A set of keys is not a gun. A beer bottle is not a gun. Tin foil is not a gun. A knife and a piece of wood are not a gun. Underwear is not a gun. A water hose nozzle is not a gun. A pills bottle is not a gun. A Nintendo Wii remote is not a gun. A toy truck is not a gun. A knife is not a gun. I am Elizabeth Dorbad, and this is for LaTanya Haggerty. Silver padlock, lock box, school locker, gym locker, pool locker, storage locker, steering wheel, bicycle lock, love locks, toolbox, cash box, safe. I am Layla Weefer, reading this piece of writing for Joseph Fennell. My name is Joseph, a pretty average name for a black man, I suppose. I imagine it is cold outside. I'm wearing a coat, so it must be. Me and my homeboy Kobe are walking to work. There's purpose in our footsteps. I wonder if, as Black men, we would ever be able to take a stroll in the spirit of frivolity. It's a rather inconsequential way to pass time, to be able to walk nowhere together. I suppose Black men can't casually roam the streets. I suppose we should always step purposefully with the shadow of fear wafting at the edges of our figure. Surely enough, a police car makes an entrance, stage right. It's a weird feeling to walk with a restless, foreboding anticipation for white men in uniform. But the moment we find ourselves at the slightest bit of ease, we get caught, usually doing nothing, always getting caught. I've not been cast in the hands up performance until now. I admit there's an eerie familiarity in the role. There is muscle memory in the gesture, a familial posturing that my body has matured into in order to complete the tableau. The ring on my set of keys is latched onto my index. I no longer recognize the feeling in my fingertips. I don't feel the cold metal keys tickling my palm as I raise my arms. Hands up, swift, postured. My body transcended sensation once I heard the cop's refrain met with a screeching percussion. My keys, solid, metal, and cold, don't make that sound. They jingle like chimes. Mine are dingy. They don't quite shine like a 45. I fell to the ground, sight loss to an overflow of viscous fluid, a bullet made forehead incision. Kobe disappeared into the tar paved beneath us. It makes me think that despite the average nature of my name, a black man is never concretized in the shape of averageness, not the way keys are objectively average. My name is Jessica Nguima, and this poem is for Lewis Giles. A lone star with a quiz on the bottle cap. I never actually try to solve because I am afraid of the feeling of inadequacy if I'm not able. It is the last year I'll spend in Austin, 
and I am surrounded by a circle of people who momentarily come together and within a year had dissolved. My hair is relaxed and I don't yet know the depths that depression will lead me to, but my heart is steady at the sight of a shiner box condensation rolling down the neck of the bottle and singing about the beauty of friendship at an old-timey revival during a Texas spring which with reference of actual seasons feels like summer oh lord does the Texan in me love her a beer for all that my constitution is now more delicate and the adult me has moved on to whiskey and wine. I'm Amanda Eicher. This writing is for De Carlos Moore. The beauty of the question is a writing through of restorative justice techniques I learned while teaching in a bilingual elementary school in East Oakland for two years. I wish these techniques were more available to us as a society and I wish that officers involved in De Carlos Moore's shooting had had access to these techniques. I wonder what life would be like for all of us, but especially for De Carlos Moore, if that were the case. I'm Kenny. This poem is for John T. Williams. It's called A Warrior Without Violence. Whose chisel is that? Everyone knows. Its owner is Quite peculiar, though. But he was a native to the land, like the sun with the rainbow. The officer watches him pace. He cries, hello. He takes on an aggressive stance, like a warrior situating his bow and arrow. The man gives his chisel a shake, and soon after, the officer decides his fate. The only other sounds that break are the voices of his indigenous ancestors that ache. The chisel is small, misleading, and deep. But the woodcarver has promises to keep. Tormented with nightmares, his soul never sleeps. Day after day, he chisels away, drinking the pain away. The woodcarver never expects what's coming ahead, only a state of naivete. The officer is at his brink. He doesn't even think in a flash of terror and he sees red and then boom. The officer turned and fled. Here the woodcarver became a warrior. The chisel was his gun. But initially his, its purpose was just for fun. He was a warrior without inciting violence. Something our country knows all too well. Being in his skin, he was doomed to hell. To be a warrior without violence, what does it mean, I ask? It's like a soldier without a weapon. It's like a train without a whistle. It's like a carver without a chisel. To be a warrior without violence, and truly, what does it mean to be unsafe in your skin, I guess, to look for justice unseen? My name is Jaden Stahl, and this poem is for James Wyant. Last night I left you collapsed on the floor by my bed. You tumbled twice to get there and remained still until morning. Perhaps you were thrown, I can't remember. So careless are my thoughts of you. You, existing as afterthought. You, presumed playful with elastic shrugs with creases set, all intimacy, but never breath. Warmth, but rarely sun. Sleep is a stranger these days. Adrenaline seeps poison in the dark, infecting my brain with a heart pound, a throb, sharp intake of breath, all teeming with vicious fantasies of you, spun 
draped in folds colliding with stench-choked steam. Your stitches pop, 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 pop. You tear, you break, are ripped at the seam, stretched beyond reason, recognition, and yet still are demanded. Let's go round again. Oh yes, we are not done using you more. You, torn, tattered, ragged, and worn. You, threadbare from pulling too tight, furrows hot, rubbing marathons of sweat, of skin, of blood. Some call this well-loved. Some call this comfort. As I rise in the dark to write, my pen pushes gravity. With each slash of the ink, I am sighing a thousand lullabies that will never sing a slumber. I imagine worlds where you are safe, tucked into the warmth of flesh, where only gentle hands coax you down, drawn with the tenderness learned, unlearning at the cross-stitch of the cruelty that built your song, your warp liberation, your weft resilience. I imagine the shape of you casting clear shadows, your form righteous, reactive to those bodies upon which you choke, through which you are forced to drown. I consider. I could have placed you more gently, without a toss, without a tumble. And just as quickly I forget you again, when at last sleep takes me. I awake with you clutched in my hand. I'm Eliza Myrie. My contribution is for Douglas Zerby. Um, for my contribution to the This Is Not A Gun book, I made a composite collage image of purchasable water hose nozzles from Amazon and Ace Hardware and various places, um, and also wrote a series of points of information relating to water hoses um, and water sources in Long Beach, California, where Douglas Zerby was killed, and um, some information about the case and officers. Points of information. The city of Long Beach, California, sources its potable water, like many municipalities, through groundwater sources and imported water. More than half of the city's water needs are satisfied by wells located within the city, which it has pumping rights for. The rest is supplied by the Metropolitan Water District of Southern California, known as the MWD. The MWD funnels water to Long Beach by way of the Colorado River Aqueduct and California Aqueduct, both dam natural water sources over 200 and 400 miles away, respectively. The population of Long Beach in 2010 was 462,608 people, making it the 36th most populous city in the United States at the time. 46.1% of the population was white and 30.5% was between the ages of 25 and 44. Visual acuity is often measured with a Snellen chart. These charts used by optometrists and others display letters of progressively smaller size. Normal vision is known as 2020 and means that the test subject sees a specifically sized row of letters clearly at a distance of 20 feet. Normal vision is a requirement for fighter pilots and is equivalent to being able to read either the stock quotes in the newspaper or numbers in the telephone book. The pistol grip hose nozzle is the most common type on the market. You hold these in your hand with the palm of your hand pressing the trigger into the handle, activating the flow of water. To release the trigger, just release pressure on your palm. You can also control the flow of water by controlling how far down you press the trigger. Pistol grip hose nozzles are usually a mix of plastic and metal, with the nozzle itself made out of metal and the handle made of a lightweight plastic. They have a lot of moving parts, so they're more prone to failure than other nozzle types. If you decide to go with a pistol grip, make sure you buy the highest quality one you can afford. The city of Long Beach employs over 800 sworn officers. The Long Beach 
the Long Beach Police Department is dedicated to professional, proactive, and innovative policing and is committed to building and maintaining positive relationships with the diverse community they serve. 6.5 million. The amount in damages awarded by a federal jury in 2013 to the Zerbe family in the wrongful death case of Douglas Zerbe at the hands of officers Shirtla and Ortiz. Prosecution argued that the officers standing at a distance of 23 and 38 feet away respectively did not deliver any verbal warning to Douglas Zerbe who they believed was brandishing a six shooter. Zerbe was in possession of a water nozzle and suspected to be a case of contagious fire on the officer's part. I'm Chris Johnson. The story I'm sharing is for Remain Brisbane. My story describes the time when I was 18 years old and left my home in the bed neighborhood of Brooklyn to live in the hit Ashbury in San Francisco. Two years later, I had a strange impulse to return home to see my father and I arrived two days before he suddenly died. In the aftermath of that shocking event, I was stopped by police while walking alone near Grant's tomb by the Hudson River late at night. What the police didn't know was that I was carrying LSD capsules in a prescription pill bottle in my pocket. When they asked me to show them some identification, the pill bottle was the only thing I had to offer. So I handed it to the officer who inspected it closely before giving it back to me and letting me go on my way. I had never been stopped by the police before, so the combination of losing my father by surprise and then also by surprise avoiding arrest for drug possession seemed like a strange and ironic cosmic balance that changed the course of my life. My name is Dr. Knucklehead and this is a piece for Christopher Root, Neo Griel style. They say you never forget the first time. For me, it happened when I was 11 years old, playing video games at home with my cousin. Drop the remote and put your hands up, he screamed. The officer pointed his gun inches from my head. We let our remotes fall to the ground before slowly raising our hands to the sky. All I remember is the barrel of the cop's gun staring at me while things moved in slow motion. Moments later, I heard the scuffle or something hit the ground. Mom let out a scream as the police slammed her on the floor. The cops were carrying out a drug raid in search of a guy who was renting a room for my mother. We were bystanders and they gave zero fucks about the traumatic memories they were inflicting on us. My self-concept as an elementary student was being morphed into their super predator and I could feel us being robbed of our innocence. I was one of the lucky ones. America eats its young and the police are often the teeth. Far too many children have been killed or emotionally scarred by police. And some have had toys in their hand when this has happened. In February 2014, a 17-year-old boy named Christopher Roop answered his door with his Nintendo Wii controller remote in his hand. He was greeted by a trigger-happy police officer who responded by shooting him to death in the chest. No charges were filed against the officer, despite the grand jury's finding that the force was unwarranted. This lack of accountability contributes to police killing over a thousand U.S. citizens every year. My adolescent encounters with police train me for future interactions and in instances that threatening with my life with weapons. Since the first gun ever pointed at me came from a cop, I often felt that police brutality was part of a larger community conditioning that happens in inner city areas. It desensitizes us and makes us value life less and contributes to the violence we inflict upon each other. You know, Christopher Root's story reminds me of another police incident. I must have been around nine years old when the police came to my house for similar reasons. Years later, I processed the incident through a song and poem called Fatherless Child. Here that go. Yo. 
for who the man with the gun dressed in blue? Why he beating you up? Where he taking you to? Cause Papa in the slammer, so it's back with my Nana. Then my grandma on the seventh school transfer. Papa thought you was a king. Why'd you name me Prince? I'm 11 and you ain't been home since. Nana, so and I'm just trying to grow. And trying to know Papa why I got the pledge of allegiance every day to liberty and justice. When it's just a charade. Papa, Grandpa gone and you ain't get to say goodbye. Where your liberty at? Thought the justice was blind. Papa, this ain't proper. Got a lot of contradictions. I don't think it's broken, but they hoping for the fixing. Papa, I'm done talking. I don't think they'll ever listen. Shoot, they knew they went for your addiction up in prison. See, Papa, I don't think these awful fathers on these dollars. Shit, not us. Yeah, Papa. I am Sonia Guinasaka. This poem is for Charles Kinsey and Arnaldo Rios Soto. Therapist, patient, toy truck, and police. Toy truck is toy. Patient has truck. Patient and center. Patient has therapist. Therapist has training. Therapist has kindness. Where is patient? Therapist finds patient, therapist has breath, therapist and patient sit on ground, officer has gun, it's just a toy. Therapist and patient, officer shoots, therapist on ground, therapist is shot, therapist is alive, officer has backup, officer has country, officer is free, officer has gun, officer always had Patient never had gun. Patient had toy, not gun. Therapist never had gun. Florida has toy trucks. Florida has therapists. Florida has guns. Florida has Charles, Arnaldo, and policemen. Florida has orange blossoms. Florida smells like gunpowder and sulfur. My name is Constance Hockaday, and I made this writing and collection of images for Joseph Mann. My contribution is an index of all of the objects that my survivalist ex-Coast Guard father carries around in his pockets on a, on a daily basis, and the writing that goes along with this index is a story about his attempts to pass on um, his lessons for survival to me when I was eight years old. The story basically involves him selling me a knife for a nickel.